16. I've never broken a lens, but God, come close. <laughs> Ooh, that's close. That is close, but it, that makes it good. <laughs> There's some guys with yo-yos that knock quarters off your ears. You can stick them in your ear and you know, just, you don't want to do it, but. Uh, yeah, not off my ear. <laughs> not off my ear either. <laughs> Hi, uh, Ramos. You're good? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! <laughs> Blow the lens off. Well, that almost broke your perfect record, yeah, didn't it? Did. it? <laughs> so how long have you been fooling around with yo-yos? Well, I started uh, doing yo-yo around uh, 1983, uh, 84, 85, somewhere around that time. And um, a guy named Mason Williams, who was a, a songwriter, wrote Classical Gas and was a writer on a show, sure. brought me this song about the Duncan demonstrators back in the 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember doing a yo-yo when I was about 10 years old. So I brought out the yo-yo, tried to find a yo-yo, and started doing the song and doing a little bit of yo-yo. Most of it was I was winding it up most of the time. And, uh, and Dickie would start doing the play-by-play the -play like a, a, a sports announcer. Right. And so most of the time he said, oh, the yo-yo man's not in a groove, man. He's, he's having troubles today. And so I got better and better and better. And finally we changed some songs around and now I'm the yo-yo man. <laughs> and the lens is still intact. <laughs> Well, let's, I, I'm going to ask you to do some more yo-yo stuff in a moment, but let's, uh, let's start with the music, because that's mm -hmm. where the Smothers Brothers began. What was it that drew you guys to folk music, which is where your roots are? This song has a message for every single living person in the entire world. Tom, Tom, what is the message this song sends to you? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't paying attention. I, I, I just didn't hear. I, 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 the Kingston Trio happened, and uh, all of a sudden, folk music, we said, oh, man, there's these songs, they're not, they're stories. They're stories, and you can sing anything you want. You can say anything you want about them. You can make them up. And we started singing folk songs, and a whole lot of folk songs are available. And we started having fun with them, and we were kind of the first satirical folk singers, they would call it. Well, that, that was going to be my next question, is obviously what, what really made your career was injecting the humor, and so that you weren't just folk singers, but bringing the humor into the performance. How did that come about? Well, as a youngster, uh, there, was a, there was a comedian that most people won't know now not, named George Goebel. And George no, Goebel was very know. big in the, in the early 50s, and I remember seeing him on Ed Sullivan when I was about 15, 16 years old, and he was very funny, and he didn't tell jokes. He had an attitude, and I said, oh, that's pretty neat. And I always had a tendency to be the class clown. I thought, I'd like to do that. So I was doing comedy in, in high school, emceeing uh, you know, assemblies and stuff like that. Then we got the music going. Uh, I would do funny introductions, then we'd sing these straight songs. And then pretty soon I started screwing up the songs. And pretty soon Dickie would say, no, that's not right. And pretty soon it, was, it took about a year, and then became a comedy team that sang music. <laughs> What do you think you're doing anyway, huh? Just what do you think? You're singing sharp. You're, you're out of tune. You always sing like that? That's a song, Wagon Wheels, Tommy. It's a, it's a beautiful song, and it means a lot to the people. And you, you sing it, yeah, you call well, it up like that, huh? On purpose. You yeah, well, that's, like that. that's my sound. <laughs> but if there's one thing that's said after every show we do, there will always someone will come after the show, geez, I lo love the show. That was really good, but why don't you ever finish a song? Why don't you finish a song? I said, that's what they say to Victor Borga, too. And he goes, why don't you just play a song all the way through? So uh, comedy was actually the, the, center, the centerpiece, the, the thing that made us unique. Because uh, musically, we weren't, uh, we weren't so unique. We were, just, we were good, yeah. but, but not unique or different. So, but the comedy made us different. Hello, like me. Will you cut that out? <laughs> it's very difficult singing duet by myself. <laughs> It puts a lot of pressure on your other voice. <laughs> what also made you different was in the 1960s when you had your show on CBS, it was canceled. No, we were, the, we were fired. You were fired? No, that's a big difference. See, cancellation, cancellation, having a show canceled, is illegal in a proper way. Uh, if you don't want the show on, or the people who own it, the, they, they cancel you. When you're fired, it's, 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 a, it's a breaching of contract, a breaking of a, a commitment. And we were fired. Before, uh, for various reasons. Mainly because of the political humor in the yeah. show, which at the time was perceived by some people as anti-war mm -hmm. and anti-administration. Mm -hmm. 
The war in Vietnam keeps on a raging. Blacks and whites still haven't worked it out. Pollution, guns, and poverty surround us. No wonder everybody's dropping out. You guys got so much attention for that. Did that help you or hurt you professionally? Well, it, it was a double-edged sword. It uh, hurt us tremendously in the, in the short term. For the next, uh, those 10 years, we were fired in 1969, the 70s, what we call our dark years. We uh, started doing dinner theater. Uh, most of the, we were blackballed in most of Las Vegas and Nevada. We couldn't get jobs there anymore. And uh, television dried up. And so we did theater and started all over again in 1980. From the very beginning, open, became an opening act. We, we, we got very little eye contact from our other peers in the business. It's like someone has a bad disease. You feel sorry about it, but you don't get about that. That's too bad about the firing and all that fun. So, but then you skip ahead now, uh, 15, 15 years after the fact, uh, it's in perspective. People come, especially the baby boomers, say, thank you so much for standing up and having the balls to stand up and say something and stick by your gun. So we get a lot of that residual respect. And the, the good part about that was we, we <laughs> We, we didn't wear out our welcome for those that decade. We weren't out there uh, doing Smothers Brothers on television a lot, so we kind of, we kind of, ref we refresh again, you know.